All right, simplifying algebraic expressions, section 1.4. Uh, the basis of today is a lot of review from Algebra 1, really. Uh, evaluating expressions, combining like terms, uh, writing expressions. But again, should be a good review from Algebra 1 here for the most part. All right, so writing algebraic expressions. <clears throat> Number one says... The distance remaining for a runner after M miles of a 26.2 mile marathon. Now, the biggest thing with math is, you know, math kind of have kind of has its own language. Okay, you kind of got to look for, you know, what are some key words and expressions. The biggest thing I like to think of, you know, when you're trying to write an expression, you know, think logically. Think of if this was in real life or if this is really happening, would this make sense? Okay, so for example here. I want to say the distance remaining for a runner after M miles of a 26.2 mile marathon. Well, I'm trying to find the distance here. Okay, so I'm finding distance, so D equals. <clears throat> now I'm looking for uh, an operation symbol. What operation symbol would make sense for this problem? Okay, as I start looking through, well, divide. No, divide wouldn't make sense, you know, when you're thinking about miles remaining. Um, add, if I'm saying 26.2, adding miles. No, that wouldn't make sense. Uh, multiplying, getting more miles, no. What's the last one I have here? Well, subtraction. Okay, as I think about that, if I were to actually run a race, the more miles I run, the less miles I have remaining. So I'm going to start subtracting. Okay, so again, picking up on those key phrases. Number two, the number of hours it takes to fly 1,800 miles, an average rate of N miles per hour. Um, everybody here's probably flown, right? We had a couple people in the last class that did not fly. So if you think about flying, um, you know, let's say you multiply. No, you're not going to take more hours, okay? Flying takes quick trips. So what might be the expression you would say here? Uh, Ethan, what do you think? Division, yeah. So I'm going to say H equals 1,800 divided by N. Okay, so again, yeah, that's how we're going to find the hours there. We're taking division. Now, that makes sense. You know, adding, subtracting, no, we're not getting there. Multiplying, we're not going to take more hours. You know, again, think kind of real life. What would make sense to this? Number three, Lucy's age, Y years after her 18th birthday. Well, we're trying to find her age, Y years after. What are you thinking here, Colin? What operation symbol might we use? She's getting older than 18. Add. So this is Y years after, so it'd be 18 plus Y. Again, it's, you know, picking up on those keywords, after, we're adding. Um, you know, average rate. Okay, average now we're kind of dividing. Yes, sir. Could you do Y minus 18 too? Would that work? Find Think about it here. Let's say her. After. I don't know. That's y years after. Um, try these three on your own. Again, think of expressions, uh, think in real life here, what would work? And number four, do you realize it is seconds? Let's start looking here. Number four, so on the number of seconds in H hours. So as I look here, um, what would be the best expression, might you say? John, what do you think here? Division would not be it. It actually be multiplication because you're thinking in seconds here. The more hours you have, the more seconds you're going to get, right? So S here is going to be 3,600 times H because there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. So if I, the more hours I have, I'm going to have to multiply that by it. Okay, that was kind of a tougher one earlier as well. Uh, number five, the number of apples in a basket of 12 after N more are added. So A equals, what might we say there, Jack? Uh, A equals 12 plus N. Nice job. Yeah. You know, it gives it to us. We're adding it. And then number six, the number of days it will take to walk 100 miles if you walk M miles per day. Uh, what do you say, Sean? So that one is very similar to like what we had on the first one, or the one earlier about a plane. What do you think, Jarrett? Uh, I was saying if you plug in like a five or something miles per day, I think you would subtract it or add. So let's, let's think about it here. Let's say you walk five miles per day. 
How many days would it take you to finish that? 20. So what, what operation did you just do? Division. So yeah, you take 100 divided by M. And again, if you ever get confused, plug a number in. You know, get out of letters, get into numbers there. Okay, and it makes a lot more sense. All right, next one here. We're going to talk about evaluating now. Just as I said, you know, if you did number one in the warm-up, you're going to do pretty well here. Evaluating is, again, using the order of operations. Now, we all might remember, you know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the acronym for parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract, um, the one a lot of times people forget about is multiplying and dividing, you go from left to right. So that does not mean you always do multiplication before a div division. You work from left to right. Same thing with addition subtraction. You work from left to right. All right, so as we look here, again, multiplying and dividing, you go left to right. Same with addition, addition subtraction. Go left to right as you work at it. Uh, the biggest thing here is whenever you plug them in, make sure you plug them in with parentheses. Very important, especially, especially when you're using um, exponents. And then also when they're negatives. Uh, plugging them in with parentheses shows that's multiplication between. A lot of times you throw in with a negative, uh, you might get confused and think you're subtracting. All right? So let's look at the next three here <coughs> as it comes up. There we go. So I want to evaluate each, ex each expression for x equals 8, y equals negative 4, and, or sorry, y equals negative 5, and z equals 4. So again, evaluate means substitute and solve. I'm going to substitute the values in, and then I'm going to solve. So I plug them in here. I get 8 plus 3 times 8 times negative 5 minus 2 times 4. Again, I'm plugging them each in, in parentheses, so I know what's going on here. Order of operations, um, parentheses, I'm putting each number in parentheses, so there's no really group of parentheses. No exponents. Now I'm going to do multiplication here. Now as I look at my two multiplication parts, uh, the 3 times 8 times negative 5, using the properties we've talked about in here, what would be an easy way to multiply those mentally and not do 3 times 8, then times negative 4. What might be an easier way to multiply those mentally? Shane, what do you think you can multiply first? I can do that one first. Okay. So that would be 8, right? So what about this middle part here? What do you suppose I can multiply in there? Again, do this mentally. What would be an easier way to change around the multiplication and multiply instead of doing 3 times 8 first? Yeah. Let's do 8 times negative 5 first. Now, why do we do that? Because that gets us negative 40. Anytime you can get to a 0, it's a lot easier to multiply mentally. So 8 times negative 5 is negative 40 times 3. I get negative 120. Okay? And I still have my 8 plus out front. Well, now I have 8 plus and negative 20 minus 8. Again, I can switch things around to make this easier. What do I see right away, John? I see plus and negative next to each other, which is basically just subtraction, right? What else do I see here? I see an 8 and a subtracting 8. Those are going to cancel, really. And then I'm left with negative 120. Again, rearranging and seeing where I can make simplifications uh, makes these problems a lot easier. Okay, number 8 here. I have xyz minus x squared. So I have x, y, z minus 8 squared. Again, number, um, this first part here, what's a way I can multiply those mentally? Okay, again, I can do the same way there. Uh, 8 times negative 5 times 4 would get me 160. 160. Nice job. So I get negative 160. Minus 8 squared is what, Reagan? 64. Now, they're both negatives there, so I'm going to add them and keep the answer negative, which is actually going to get me what, Garrett? No. No. Because they're both negatives here? It's like when you owe somebody, you owe somebody else. How much do you owe them all together? There you go. Negative 224. 
Again, that negative's there. Always throw people for a loop. But think about it. Um, you know, when you, have, when you have both negatives, it's like adding up debt. Okay, you're adding up the debt, which nobody likes to do. But if you have student loans like me, you do have that. Uh, number nine, x squared y minus y squared z. Plugging it in here. So I get 8 squared times negative 5 minus negative 5 squared times 4. Now, again, when I have that negative in there, I have to remember it's negative 5 times negative 5. Okay? Give myself some room to work. Um, as I work that problem out, 8 squared gets me 64. 64 times negative 5 might be a higher number there. Thank you. Negative 320. Um, negative 5 squared is positive 25. Take 25 times 4 and get 100 there. Okay. So I get negative 320 minus 100, and I'm going to get an answer of negative 420. Nice job. All right, try these next two on your own here. Again, plug, evaluate, plug in each part in. All right, let's go through this here. Uh, number 10. Uh, Ethan, you got it? Ooh, close. It's actually negative 19. Okay, when you plug that in, you get 25 minus 40 minus 4. Okay, now here's the part where a lot of us might have made a mistake here. When you plug that in, you have to plug it in again with parentheses. Negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. That subtraction is going to come straight down. Okay, negative 15 minus 4, I get negative 19. Nice job. Uh, number 11, uh, Jared, I think I saw you had the right one. What do you get? Uh, 12. You get 12. Okay. Same thing, same thing. They're plugging it all in here. You actually get 10 plus 10 minus 8, uh, and you get 12. Next part here, combining like terms. We talked about it a little bit yesterday when we were talking about, uh, combining radicals and simplifying some radicals. The big thing on combining like terms is you have to have the same variable and the same exponent in order to combine them. And when you do have that, you add or subtract the coefficients. Uh, the coefficients would be the numerical term in front uh, of the term. Okay? So again, the big thing is combining like terms, finding what is similar, what is like, and then adding or subtracting the coefficients. So as we look here, number 12. 12x plus 30x. If I were to combine those, I'm adding and subtracting the coefficients. The variable is going to stay the same. What do I get for an answer there, Shane? 42x. And again, the big thing is there, you don't add or subtract the x's. The variables stay the same. Now, number 13, I have 4n plus 4n squared plus 3n. Notice, different exponents. I can't combine everything here. Okay? It has to be the same variable and the same exponent in order to combine when I do combine like terms here, what am I going to get, John? 7n plus 4n squared. Very good. Again, notice, can't combine the two of those because those are different terms. Yes, sir? So when we get more complicated, are you going to care about how we order it? We will. When we get to polynomials, uh, you will have to write it in standard form, which would be descending order from degrees. But we haven't got there yet. Unless you know how to do that, then do it now. Do you know how to do that? I was okay. Um, yes, you can do that. Uh, but no, when we get to actual polynomials, you go to descending order of degrees. We'll do standard form. Yep. Uh, 14, 16y plus 84y. What do I get, Justin? Thank you. 100y. Good work. Try these next ones here on your own when they come up. Or if you see it on your iPad, you can do it. There we go. Try these three. All right, let's look at these here. Number 15, Andy, what are you giving me combine all those? 
20x. Nice job. Uh, number 16. When you combine those, what do you get? Bailey? Nice job. 5x plus 8x squared plus 2y. Uh, the big thing on number 16 that most people forget about sometimes is there's always an invisible 1 coefficient if there is no number. Okay, so always do remember that. There's an invisible 1 there. Nice job. Uh, 17. Sage, what do you got? Nice job. Next part here. Same thing, simplifying with parentheses. The biggest thing when I'm simplifying with parentheses is recognizing this part right here. Anytime you see that, we talked about that the other day. What is the thought process, Garrett? What do I have to do there? Uh, distribute. distribute. All right, that's the big part when we're talking about parentheses is you have to distribute. So again, I there to get 2x minus 8 plus 9x plus 1. Now I can combine like terms, and when I combine like terms, I get an answer of, oh, let's go. Colin, what do you got? 11x minus 7. Nice job. 11x minus 7. Okay. Try the next two on your own. The key, again, when you're talking about distribute, is you got to distribute that negative in there. Make sure you do not forget about the negative to both. Jack, what do you have for an answer on number 19? Ooh, what'd you forget to do? Oh, uh, Make sure that it goes to both. So if I take negative 8 times 2, I get... 16. So negative 5K minus 16. Again, distributing, making sure you multiply to both. Okay, 20. What do you get for 20, Reagan? Yeah, I don't know. What do you have to distribute there? No, There's an invisible 1 there. So re re really what you're distributing is the negative 1. So if you distribute the negative 1, you get 4a minus 4a plus 3, which I think can then combine and get what, Colin? Three. Just 3. Okay? Yeah, when it's just the negative out there, you're going to distribute the negative to everything in the parentheses. All right, try this geometric problem. Uh, find the perimeter. Do you all remember what perimeter means? Area around. Distance around. Okay? So to find the distance around, we're going to just add up all the lengths, or you can maybe find some shortcuts along the way, uh, but find the perimeter. All right, as I look up here, Gary, think you got it? Yeah. What do you got? 2A plus 4B. Very good. 2A plus 4B. Yeah, I'm looking to combine the A's. <coughs> all right. And then I look to add my B's, and I get 2A plus 4B. Okay, you will have a problem like that on your homework. Uh, just again, just find the perimeter, add up, combine like terms. Here is your assignment.